Hey everyone, hi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am going through the 34 books that the New York Times is recommending for fall. They are books that are going to be released and boy do I have some feelings about them. If you are new to my channel, then hello, welcome. Um, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope everybody enjoys this video. If you find yourself enjoying the vibe and um, really just, you know, just find, if you're finding that you're enjoying the vibe, I would encourage you to subscribe, stick around. Without any further rambling on, let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. I have a bunch of categories and you, you might see them in the, um, I will hopefully have them sussed out, you know, with like the chapter titles in the, in the YouTube-ness. <laughs> I had a really good time creating them this morning uh, while me and my husband were waking up and getting ready. Um, so yeah, but I really don't want to spend, I've scooted to the side so there are plenty of, there's plenty of room for pictures. I don't really want to spend a lot of time on the books that I don't want to read or that I found really unintriguing, uninspiring, especially when I read the copy. So I'm going to kind of breeze through those and then I'm going to, <laughs> I'm mostly going to focus on the books that are really getting me. They're really getting my goat. So the first category is bleh, B-L-E-H, bleh. <laughs> and it's because I just don't want to read. I, tr I actively don't want to read these books. The first being in Holly by Stephen King. I've read Stephen King before and he's not for me. Um, I also have on this list Brooklyn Crime Novel by Jonathan Latham. I read Motherless Brooklyn last year, I think, and I quite enjoyed it. It was Latham's like seminal work and I just was really unimpressed considering that it was his most popular and widely received novel. I just didn't, I just, I didn't love it. I thought it was good, not great, and it didn't blow me away, and I'm just definitely not interested in one of his new novels. And The Exchange by John, Jonathan, John Grisham. John Grisham. Um, maybe I don't, maybe I have a thing against Jonathan's. I shouldn't say that, one of my brother's names is Jonathan. So um, The Exchange is the sequel to, I have my computer right here, the sequel to The Firm, which was put out in 1991. I may have even read The Firm, I don't remember. I've read a couple of Grisham novels, and uh, He's not, he is not somebody I've really thought about picking up in at least 15 years. So yeah, the fact that he's come out with a new novel is like water on a duck's back to me. My next category is anti-buzzwords. Some of these descriptions truly had words that set me off against the book. Like I was just like, no, 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 no. Same Bed, Different Dreams by Ed Park is one of them. It's supposed to be a surrealist novel, a rethinking of Korea um, and going all the way back to the early 1900s to set a alternative political reality. Sounds kind of interesting on that front, but the fact that it's surrealist, I'm just, I'm like, no, <laughs> like, no, 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 no. We also have The Vulnerables by Singre Sigrid Nunez. Um, this is going to be a pandemic novel. I have read a couple of pandemic novels. Actually, some of them have quite worked for me, but um, I've kind of had to be harangled <laughs> into both. For example, um, the sentence by Louise er Erdrich. No, er I think that's right. The sentence by Louise Erdrich, Erdrich, I think. It's the hard C at the end rather than Erdrich. Like, anyways. I think about pronunciation, even though I know it's, it seems like I don't, but um, Louise Erdrich, the sentence is a COVID novel and I quite enjoyed it. However, it was long listed and short listed for the women's prize, which is why I picked it up. I also read Lucy by the Sea, um, a Lucy Barton novel by Elizabeth Strout. And again, it was one of those books where a couple of her books were long listed for the booker. And I was, I really knew that I was enjoying that series. I enjoyed Lucy Barton as a character. And so that was the fourth book in the Lucy Barton series. And I really enjoyed that. Um, but if you can kind of tell, there was like other reasons why I was picking it up, they, those books up. There was more than just the fact that it was a, a 
COVID novel. And so I see a COVID novel and actually I'm just like, I really, I just don't want to read it. Um, it just kind of puts me off to it. And it may, it might be because of that we're getting deep already. I'm like, I'm going to move through these. And then here I am like sharing my feelings. It possibly could be the fact that we're still living in a post COVID world. Um, COVID has, you know, cycled back around there. It's, you know, swept through our church at certain points. It's swept through the schools at certain points in my workplace. And there is just a part of me that it feels a bit like it's, it's hitting too close to home. And so I would rather have a bit of distance with myself and, you know, reading about COVID-19, which I still just have big feelings about since I lived through it. So yeah, anyways, the vulnerables, uh, Nunez. The next, uh, or the final anti-buzzword novel on this list is Tremor by Teju Cole. And this is going to be uh, vignettes. Um, and it's, you know, set through the eyes of a Nigerian photography professor and he meditates on art, race, and history. But I think what really turned me off was the word vignettes. It's not that I don't like a book in vignettes, it's fine. It's just not my favorite way to read stories. And um, it, it's not my favorite way to read stories, truly and honestly. And it's not that I'm act I actively avoid that, but when I do see it, it doesn't get me excited about the novel. My next category is Yawn Fest. It's similar to anti-buzzwords, um, but there isn't an actual word where I'm like, ugh, no, no, no thank you. Um, more, it's just like, it sounds not like my kind of book. The first book on this list is Do You Remember Being Born by Shawn Michaels. This is about a poet who realizes that she doesn't have financial stability and that she, then she decides to program an AI and reflect on stuff. In her life and I was thinking that this is probably I was wondering if this author what is her, Michaels um, is trying to be a bit like Ishiguru uh, Clara and the Sun from what I remember what that book was supposed to be about it's the way that humans are interacting with technology in a meaningful or less meaningful way and that question doesn't tickle my fancy the next is um, a house for Alice and this is going to be an, about, uh, this is by Diana Evans, and it's about an event that I don't know of, the 2017 fire at Grenfell Tower in London. And the main character loses her husband, and she decides, she's in this decision-making process as to whether she should re return to Nigeria um, or stay in a place that she finds uh, a place of disagreement, which is in quotes. And it sounds fine. It just sounds kind of boring, to be honest. Then we have Normal Women. This is like, it's a setup for a thriller. There are so many thrillers I want to read. It's about Danny who realizes that, you know, she doesn't have enough money and then she takes a job at a yoga center, which could, it might double as a brothel. Does that sound not like a thriller that you ever did hear one? However, then the real thriller part comes in and it's that the yoga instructor, the leader, she ends up going missing and it's up to our main character to find her. I was like, okay. And the final book is um, called Absolution by Alice McDermott, uh, or McDermott, 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 who knows? Um, <laughs> I mean, it's probably out there. I just didn't look it up, so my apologies. Um, and this is going to be about um, two women who were trying to help Vietnamese citizens um, or Vietnamese civilians in the 1960s and years later they have to reflect on their altruism. I've heard stor about stories like this before. I've read about stories like this before. You know, is it altruism or is it self-centered? I kind of have a, a glimpse and a glance at those types of questions and ultimately it makes me want to read a nonfiction about this subject rather than a fiction novel. So those are the ones that I feel like are a yawn fest. Then we're, we're continuing with like the negativity train. That's why I wanted to like move it and groove it because I don't want to stay in a sense of negative space. That's in a negative, you know, in a, ne in a negative space. I'm still not making sense. Um, I didn't want to sit in negativity. There we go for a long time. And so I'm trying to just go through the ones that I'm not interested in pretty quickly. The last section is uh, short stories, schmort stories. That's what I named it because I just, it is, it takes a, a lot for me to get excited about short story collection. The first one is The Maniac by Benjamin Le Labatat, Labat Labatot. 
Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm not going to even read the descriptions because short stories is like an anti buzzword, but I just decided to put it in there because there are two and it takes two to make a category. Um, and then the second book that's a short story collection is The Hive and the Honey by Paul Yoon. So I'm going to be skipping those. Some of these descriptions sound like some of the descriptions in my next category, which is I'd read it if my book club was, was making me, which by this I mean that like, you know, if there is a little extra push, you know, one of my friends wanted to pick it up. Um, I could be harangled into reading one of these. Like I could get excited, but in a vacuum, I'm not. And some of the the descriptions sound really close to some of the some of the books that I don't want to read. However, some of the nuances in the descriptions, a couple of the nuances, it makes it sound more like a Shelley book. So, um, so anyways, for example, the first book on this list, I'd read it if my book club was making me, <laughs> or if my book club chose it, maybe is a better way to say it. Um, it's Bright Young Woman by Jessica Knoll, and here's what it says. The year is 1978. I love books set in the 70s and the 80s and even the 90s. Yeah, you know, I read my first Grady Hendrix and I really loved it, and it was, his book was set in 1988. So, Immediately, the year it sounds a little more intriguing. Um, the copy goes on to say, the all-American sex killer, as the papers refer to the criminal, is on a murder spree. After a pair of young women go missing in Seattle and a student finds two of her sorority sisters dead in Tallahassee, two women linked by the tragedy go on a shared mission to catch the, cul the culprit. For whatever reason, this sounds like a bad bad girl feminist novel <laughs> you know it just that's what it sounds like and so if i had if there was a group reading it and i was invited or someone suggested it and was really excited about it i could see myself picking this up the next book is unsettled by ayana mathis so mathis follows three generations of a black family in 1985 i already told you how i feel about the 80s um, which is already kind of tickling me. Uh, the main character, Avery Carson, and her son move into a shelter after she leaves an abusive marriage. Um, and then it seems like her son's father um, comes into town. He's a Black Panther, and he has this vision of building a local health clinic and commune, and with him brings a sense of hope and a sense of danger. Does that not sound good? If someone was pitching this to me as a buddy read, I would be like, maybe, I'm thinking about it. The next book sounds, the premise sounds intriguing, and it's called The Leftover Woman by Jean Kwok. So Jasmine, she is arriving to the United States in search of her daughter. So she's a woman on a mis mission. Um, her abusive husband gave up the daughter for adoption, and she learn she the the main character Jasmine soon learns that the child was taken by a wealthy New York publishing family. So as Jasmine is balancing shifts as a cocktail waitress to pay down her debts to the human traffickers who brought her to America, she must feel feel the threats that could reveal her secret. So I love that it's about a mother-daughter bond and that we're thinking we're set in New York. I'm a sucker for books set in the US, especially New York. Um, it just sounds interesting, right? This next book sounds quite puzzling and it's called The Vengean Vengeance is Mine by Maria Nadai, Nadai, I think. Um, and it's translated by Jordan Stump. So um, Suzanne, Matre 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 Suzanne is a lawyer living in a quiet Bordeaux until a man approaches her with a request. Could she represent his wife who's been accused of murdering their children? As the case threatens to up upend her life, she puzzles out whether she knows this man from her past. It sounds like a psychological thriller which is hard for me to pass up. The next book the author has worked on for years and it is Jessamine Ward. Um, her book is Let Us Descend. And this is going to be following an enslaved teenager who is separated from her mother and sold by her white father. Apparently, again, the author has been working on this for years and she's been working to balance a sense of hope and a sense of self. And I really liked that. I like when an author takes a long time with projects. It doesn't mean that the book will be good but it does kind of stir something up in me. 
Like it gets me feeling like I'm like, oh, they work so hard. It's not just like they're turning and cranking them out. So, you know, that really kind of caught my eye. Oh yeah, this one sounded good. It's so funny because it's like, I'm not interested in a surrealist novel where it rewrites political Korean hi history, but this book sounds good somehow. And it's called The New Naturals by Gabriel Bump. In the wake of their child's death, a couple found a utopian society inside an abandoned restaurant in Western Massachusetts, drawing a colorful group of members from all walks of life. I like that colorful group of members. But with all countercultural experiments, says the copy, the group soon wonders whether utopia is truly possible. I like I like thought experiments like that. It doesn't it helps also that when I was working at my pre when I was working at my other school, um, they had read The Giver and it was really interesting to get to watch young students think about a utopian society and what that means and the rules and the repercussions and at one point they had to build their own utopian society and it was really cool it was really cool the next book is watch night by jane ann phillips and this is about this is this is what it says it's about at the trans allegheny lunatic asylum in west virginia which operates under dr thomas story kirk bridges bridges surprisingly progressive moral treatment principles, 12-year-old Kana Lee and her mother take back their lives in the wake of the Civil War. I think the setting sounds really interesting. I think it could be, if it gets like rave reviews, it could be something that I would be quite interested in. And um, the whole premise, you know, set in West Virginia, post-World War, <laughs> kind of gets me. Next up, we have People Collide, and this is by Elsie McElroy and this is about a couple this it sounds actually quite interesting maybe I should have moved it up but it sounds it sounds good <laughs> I don't know why like surrealist and experimental literature doesn't work but like certain things do I you know how do I even know my own mind but it, this is what it says Ellie and Elizabeth or Eli and Elizabeth are a couple living in Bulgaria and one day Eli leaves the apartment to discover he's in his wife's body, okay? Um, and his wife, presumably in his, is missing. As Eli searches for his wife across Europe, he re-examines his marriage, his lived experience, and even the basic tenets of his identity. That sounds amazing, okay? Like, I know it's an old trope, you know, Freaky Friday moment, but <laughs> there's just something about it that I was like, what? That sounds great. I think that was my biggest category, you know? I, it just, it speaks to the fact that I really love, you know, human connection and I can really get sucked into the hype when I see other people reading stuff and, <laughs> you know, you know how it goes. I know I'm not alone here. Um, the next category is I'd read your backlisted book. So I'm gonna go through, through these rather quickly. So Zadie Smith has a new book. We all know this, The Fraud. She has been writing since she was two, I'm sure. And, you know, she had a wildly acclaimed hit. Will she ever see that success again with milk teeth, right? Milk, white teeth, milk, milk teeth, something teeth. I'm going to look it up. White teeth. Yes. I, I just want to read that. I mean, that sounds good. Set in Victorian England and in which a lower class Australian butcher claimed the right to a huge estate. I mean, it sounds great. It's historical fiction but I want to read White Teeth, okay? Don't at me. The next book is The Young Man by Annie Erno, transla translated by Allison L. Slater. She won the Nobel Prize for Literature last year. The New York Times was like, look, we gotta put her on our list. And so they did. So they're highlighting her newest book. I have a ton of her backlisted books. Thank you, Nathan. I have a ton of her backlisted books, so I would just rather, I just want to read her backlisted stuff, all right? Then there's Mr. Texas by Lawrence Wright. This almost made it into my bleh category because I don't want to read about Texas. I'm sorry. They're causing a lot of trouble over here. I mean, no offense to second Texas, just a lot of complicated stuff coming out of Texas and their legislator recently. So I don't really want to read a novel, but I found out Lawrence Wright actually wrote the Pulitzer a Pulitzer Prize winning. He's a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. I want to I want to read his Pulitzer Prize winning stuff. Okay, um, I'm sure it's a lovely novel that brings up wonderful questions. But I was just like, I want to read the thing that won. Then we have The Poll by J. M. Coetzee, another Nobel Prize winning author, Nobel laureate. 
What do you think I'm going to say? Yes, I want to read his no his prize winning stuff, not the new stuff, the old stuff. The, th the stuff that's vetted. <laughs> The stuff that we know is good. And then we have America Fantastica by Tim O'Brien. I own the things they carried. My husband has been telling me to read that book for years. So if I read a Tim O'Brien, it better be, come hell or high water, the things they carried. Next we have A Shining by John Foss. Jan Foss. Jan Foss. Translated by Damien S S Cyril's. Foss has the Septology you know, quinceptology novel set. I would rather read that than this new book. What is it? Septology series, that's right. And so, you know, I've actually heard mixed things about that, those books. But you know what, we're not going with that. If I'm gonna read a, a Foss, a Fosse, Foss, 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 who knows, then, <laughs> then, then I am going to be reading the, those septology books. And then finally, Day by Michael Cunningham. Probably one of the books that has been sitting on my TBR the longest is The Hours by Cunningham. And it's all about Mrs. Dalloway and Virginia Woolf and have I read it? No, but I would want to more than I would want to read Day. So there you go. The next category is going to be a casual curiosity. So I am, I do feel like these books are like starting to really inch towards like did you write this for me? But it just sounds good and I the topics sound interesting. So the first on this list is Daughter by Claudia Day. So this is uh, Day's third novel and it's going to be following Mona whose father is a novelist and after he makes her complicit in an affair he's having with his publicist, the other women in her family hold her responsible. So um, it's going to be leaping between Mona's nar narration and her family's I wonder if they're supposed to be like the Greek chorus and they're like narrating one side of the story and then Mona's narrating the other side of the story. It's interesting because of the way that this copy is written. So Day examines is estrangement from multiple perspectives as decades of betrayal accumulate. That sounds really interesting and deep and fascinating. Oh, this next one. Oh my goodness. Okay. The Land of Milk and Honey by C.M. Zong. In a version of the future where the world is blanketed in smog and everyday foods, even fresh strawberries, have become scarce, a young chef travels to a mountain colony on the Italian-French border to cook meals of rare ingredients for the ultra-wealthy. There, she re rediscovers the pleasure of food and forms a curious bond with her boss's daughter. That sounds amazing. That sounds like so much fun. I just like books about food. <laughs> I like, I just do. And so like, uh, you know, this like sci-fi-ish, you know, post-apocalyptic, you know, um, novel. I mean, it just, it sounds good, right? That sounds good. All right, the next one is going to be Blackout. Um, and this is, we have an unnamed, unnamed narrator um, that is going under, undergoing psych psychiatric treat, treatment at a psych psychiatric hospital. Um, the, as the narrator is trying to finish his research. The book is interspersed. This is why I thought this sounded like kind of good. It's interspersed with passages of a fictional biography, fictional poems, and playful references to queer art and literature, which sounds so good. It sounds so good, y'all. <sighs> I'm so glad that I decided to skip, like really kind of work through the books that I don't want to read because those are just like, you know, why explain that when I can just jump into the books that are getting me excited? All right, we have two categories left. The first one is, I know you watched my channel and wrote that book for me. And the first book in that category is The Vast, The Vaster Wilds by Lauren Groff. So this is her new novel about, which is a wilderness epic. Mm. Y'all, she wrote it for me. I know it. It's about a servant girl who must survive a bitter winter after fleeing um, a settlement in 1960s Virginia. Oh my gosh. All, every, all, it, wow, wow. That sounds amazing. Like, amazing. So, look, Groff, I know you watched my channel and that you wrote that, that book for me. Okay? Like, we all know this admit it in one of your author interviews. Thank you so much. The, the next, the next and final book in this category is 
Wellness by Nathan Hill. So it says that Hill tells the story of Jack and Eliz Elizabeth's marriage from their courtship in the 90s. Mm, yes, book set in the 90s. Holla, holla. All right, set in the 90s Chicago art scene as their life as, and, and then to their life as parents. So we're starting off at, during the courtship in the 90s with Chicago's art, Chicago art scene. And then we follow them through as they become parents. This novel is concerned with this question, how much can something change before it's no longer fundamentally itself? I swear you plucked that question from my soul, Nathan Hill. I swear you did. So thank you. Thank you for writing this, I feel seen. Wow. Now these last two books is Take My Money and then we added, <laughs> Ted and I added, I'm a, con I'm a consumerist pig, but it's, I don't really think that. It's really just like Take My Money because these books sound so good. The first one is shocking. It's a short story collection. Normal Rules Don't Apply by Kate At Atkinson. My normal rule of not liking short stories clearly doesn't apply because it's Kate Atkinson. I am reading a Kate Atkinson book. I have am becoming a Kate Atkinson stan. I love her. She's amazing. I think that everything, I've only read one of her books, but I'm on a Kate Atkinson high. And I am just like, I believe that every book that she ever wrote is probably brilliant and amazing and she can do no wrong. That's how I feel as I'm reading Kate's histories, all right? I just think she's brilliant. And so she's coming out with a new book and I am tempted to the high, to the, to the high waters to the, I am tempted to the ledge of, I don't know where I was going with that. I am so tempted. I am like, did you, did you put something addicting in your writing? Like what is happening? What is happening? I don't even like short stories and I'm just like, I don't care what's about. It's by Kate Atkinson now I wanna read it. Who am I? And the other one is Rogue by Mona Awad. Girl, it's Rouge, not Rogue. Rouge. Yeah, yeah, we all know that we. I love Bunny. It was amazing. One of the best books I read this year. This is a gothic tale set in modern day Los Angeles about a young woman as she grieves her be beauty obsessed mother. I swear, Mona Awad and I are best friends and she was like, I'm gonna write a book just for you. That's what, that's what she told me. Like, I swear that that's what she said, okay? So I'm just supporting my best friend here. Kate Atkinson is my aunt that comes over for wine on Fridays. And she was like, I'm writing a book that I know you're going to love. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Take my money, ladies. Take my money now. So those are the books that the New York Times recommended. Starting off, you know, I did categorize them, so it was kind of like easy to just be like, nope, 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 nope. And then at the very end, I was just like, how, how why, why do such tempting things exist for the soul of a reader? Just why? Why, guys? Okay, I am done. I'm done. I'm being silly. I'm not really being silly at this point. But thank you so much for watching. I'm going to scoot back to the center because that's what I do over here. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for watching and letting me be so silly and just enjoy myself while I talk about new book releases. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. What, what has tickled your fancy? What sounds good to you? I will leave the main article linked down below. I will leave the titles linked down below. I will try and give you all the resources that I can. I will, for sure. And um, yeah, that's it for me. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye. Thank you.